Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop. Today we have a couple failed PTU units here uh, that we're gonna take apart and we're gonna try to show you where the best place is uh, to add a drain plug on here because these do not have a drain plug and fluid issues and breakdown is what's causing all these units to get replaced. Now the funny thing about these units is that they're non-serviceable technically. There's no serviceable parts inside the units and they're failing inside the unit because the fluid's breaking down and namely it's taking out the idler gear so ford does now uh, for warranty purposes has a idler gear service kit to replace and and kind of rebuild them a little bit but you'll see once we get inside that by the time you start smelling the propane smell or you feel anything in the drivetrain you're hearing anything uh, the, the PTU is done for, it's just time to change the whole unit anyways and then maintain the fluid from then on out. The good thing about it is if you do change one of these units out, the new units from Ford has a different style cover on there and they include a fill and a drain plug. Who to thunk it, right? So at least your newer unit, you'd be able to maintain the fluid every 20, 30,000 miles and it should last, uh, you know, 100,000 miles or more, the, the actual unit itself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start tearing these apart. Before we open these units up, let's take a look at the outside to show you exactly how they fail. So like I said, the idler gear uh, fails inside of there, overheats, and then it starts puking fluid out the top vent here. So this one started to do a little bit. This one was a little worse, and oh boy, this one was really, really bad. So once it happens and it comes out the top of the vent here, it usually comes on the side and drips onto the exhaust, and that's where you get the propane smell. Uh, like I said, by the point, by the time it starts heating up enough to puke out the vent and get it on there for you to smell it, it's already cooked inside. So if you see it all over the outside here like this, and it's not coming from the intermediate shaft seal on there, um, it's cooked inside. That's exactly how they fail. So on this one right here, um, I decided the other day to go ahead and pull off the cover on here. I'll pull off the cover on all these and show you though. Um, and see where can we put a drain in here. Here's the fill plug and it sits like this in the car, about level right there. So that's the lowest point right there. So right here, there is no way you can get any kind of drain plug in there. Uh, whereas these two spots, uh, they're pretty much good to go. Now it's a quarter inch NPT tap that I did on these. I would still probably go with an eighth inch NPT on there. Uh, tap this this is kind of maximizing you'll see once you open up in the inside this is maxing it out so um i go eighth inch and you'll still be able to drain it and you're supposed to be draining these when they're smoking hot and the fluid's thin anyway so with this open and eighth inch plug down here pulled out it's going to shoot out of there and give you a good exchange either way without uh, affecting the structural integrity of the case but we'll show you once we get inside how tight it is inside of there all right so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the rest of these. We're probably not gonna open this one, it doesn't look too bad, uh, but this one, woo, let's check it out. First, let's check out this one real quick to show you where those holes are at and how they come through on the other side and how this one failed. Uh, and then we'll jump right to this one, which is the worst one right here. Um, I'll get this one out of the way. All right, so this one's already unbolted. Like I said, I already tapped into it down here. I just wanted you guys to see on the inside what's going on. Now, the reason why these are so heavy is because there's just a bunch of heavy steel gears inside of the case here. Um, oh, yeah, it all comes out just like that. Isn't that a beauty? Right there. Yo. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you real quick. They shouldn't fall out. Um, here's those drains right here. You see there's very little room, uh, but they both work in both those spots. And then over here, uh, there was just no room um, with the case right here. You'd think right here would be perfect, but it's not because the case gets really thick right here. So those are the two spots. I don't condone drilling into these cases at all, um, but if you're going to, I'd say use an eighth inch and go right here. Now the other problem with this is that these ones are a different style than let's say the ones in a Fusion or something else. So you really gotta make sure that, that cover matches up on there. Um, all three of these, this is the most common, so they're all three the same way, same style. Um, but yours might be different. So yeah, let's take a look at that. 
Mmm, yummy. You see what I mean? So right here is the cup for the idler gear. And you see it's just trash inside of there. There's a lot of shavings. It's just chewed. It's done for. You know? Oh, man. Look at this. Ew. Um, and here's the cups for the bearings in here. Now, the bearings, um, normally, they're okay. Uh, but I've seen, especially on the pinion bearing here, uh, failures. And, then, you know, it's just a standard bearing. But once they start getting pitted or chewed up inside of there, you're already done for. You cannot service anything else besides the idler right here, okay? So they have like new cups for it and of course new idler. Uh, sometimes the teeth are just shattered on here, as you can imagine. Once it heats up and this fluid breaks down, it's not protecting uh, at all for wear or cooling or anything in there. Uh, that just, they just break down. Hmm. So let's go ahead and open this other one up right here uh, and see how bad this one is and how that one failed also. I gotta make sure I drain it out, but yeah. You know, disgusting. So I went to go drain this one out. The one I said probably puked all the fluid out uh, because I don't drain these when you take them out of the vehicle, swap them out, there's no need. Uh, and I couldn't get really anything out of there. So sure enough, maybe, uh, look how much is here. It probably puked that over time and locked up. I think this one's from a 2013 or 16, 14 uh, Explorer. And I pulled it off on here. You extra gooey. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull these bolts out. All right, you guys ready for this? Whew, stinks. Now because I'm just separating this and I really don't care, you're going on a scrap pile. We're just going to tap on his ears and try to get him separated. It's just a gooey, gooey mess. Ugh. Let's try right here. And it'll start coming out of there. Uh, this sucker oh yeah there it goes just kind of break the bottom we'll check it out inside like I said these are the most common ones out there this model so chances are you guys have this one has these dowel pins that align it on here. And then over here, it kind of sticks into there, so I might tap it through on there. See? Oh, yeah. Jeez. See what I mean? That's been happening for a while. I told you it was the worst one. That's inside. That's inside the idler gear. Holy cow, this thing is packed. Look at that. So sure enough, the bearings... I don't see any pits on here. They feel pretty smooth. The gears have some wear back here. Everything else feels fine. Uh, but the case over here, see if I can, yeah. <laughs> wow. Ugh. So same thing. I mean, this is, this is, like tar, this is hard, you know? So these both feel fine, pretty much. 
Uh, it's this idler, my hand's catching it, I get chewed up by it. Look at that, here it comes. So yeah, these can fail all kinds of ways, uh, but this, uh, this idler and the bushings or whatever where it sits in the case are what's gonna fail first over the bearings and then the teeth after that. Uh, but you can see it's all because of the fluid breaking down inside of here. And then once you don't have the protection, it's just going to eat away. Metal against metal, it's going to eat away at it. And that's what's happening here. So these, you know, uh, these are like $900 or so. Then some labor. It's a lot of labor, four or five hours labor. I think each one of these I do is like between twelve and $1,400. They drop on a new unit in there. So, you know, but yeah. Yamahama. All right, so while I have you here, and I have your attention with this masterpiece, um, let's look at this other one real quick. Let me give you some tips that I found out when, um, geez, when I was uh, tapping these, okay? So like I said, you wanna use, if you have this exact style cover, take a look at it now. It's upside down, of course. If you have this exact style cover, you wanna use one of these two fins on here. Let me zoom in for you guys. There we go, that's much better. So like I was saying, um, these two pockets right here are your best bets uh, for drilling and tapping for a drain plug. So if you're insistent on adding a retrofitting a drain plug into your old uh, transfer case, um, what you wanna do is use these two pockets. This one's a no-go and this one, it's just, with everything behind here, it's definitely a no-go. You don't wanna use that one. So one of these two, and these are quarter inch holes, uh, which is pretty standard, but since they're retrofitting on here, um, the space is very limited, so these are kind of maxing it out. I would use eighth inch uh, NPT tap on there. And you wanna use an NPT tap because it's a tapered thread. Uh, so it's gonna help with retaining the plug and sealing and all that good stuff. It's a pipe plug uh, thread on there. So. What you wanna do is, is when you're drilling into it, since we're drilling into the side of the case, you wanna drill slow so it can kinda of like just chip and file away at it instead of pushing it through and all these big chunks come through the inside of the case. So you wanna use a drill and just drill, drill, drill nice and slow and then you want to use a vacuum with a small nozzle tip here while you're drilling and that'll keep all the chips coming this way. And then when you actually blow through the case to the back side here, there may only be a few small uh, chips that get inside of there. Um, the reason why I chose a side cover here over anything else is because you don't wanna drill into the actual case unit, the bottom of it, because then you're affecting the structural integrity of the case, it's taking all the stress uh, as it drives the rear drive shaft and, and differential. Uh, whereas the side cover, yes, you can see his ribs in here, it's structural to an extent, uh, but we're just affecting a small little hole here um, and it should be just fine. And this is also where Ford puts the drain plug on the newer ones. The cover is redesigned, uh, but they use the side cover also. They do not drill into it and put a tap into there, even though it was redesigned. So uh, I'm just kind of following Ford's lead on there. The only time I've seen Ford put them into the case is like on the newer, f uh, I think Infusions, the Focus for sure, and the Escapes. Um, but the, the it's totally different uh, PTU, first off, and um, the plug's like, it's huge, it's like this big. Um, so that one's, of course, totally different, it has a big old boss around it, so it, it's structurally sound uh, with that plug being in there like that. So since they're retrofitting, go small with eighth inch on here, and with it being hot, that's when you wanna change this fluid anyways, you pop the freaking fill plug on there, pop this one, and it being nice and hot, uh, it should just flow right out of there. You get a really good exchange, way better than sucking it out and then filling it back through here. So that is your options. Like I said, the new units, they come with a drain plug. So if yours does fail, uh, the new ones from Ford has a fill and a drain plug. So you'd be good to go from that point on out. Maintaining the fluid on here is, you know, it's a half a quart or a little more uh, inside these units and the bottles maybe $20, $25. So doing that every 20,000 miles or so, swapping that fluid out, is much cheaper than replacing the whole unit like this. If you take it somewhere, it's gonna be 12 to $1,400. So 
I mean, it's look at the mess that it becomes after a while. And some of these, uh, you know, have 60,000 miles or less on them. Yeah. So I hope this right here, you know, drives it home that you got to take care of your fluid. Uh, no matter if you have a drain plug or not, you want to be swapping that fluid out constantly. There's just not enough cooling and there's not enough uh, fluid in their capacity either. Ugh. Anyways, looks like some, uh, yeah, looks like this is all broken right here compared to this one right here. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so um, the other thing is, real quick, you see it failed inside. Everything's contained, right? Sometimes these, they fail so bad that they explode and they take out everything around it. You know, brake lines, trans lines, coolants. Uh, they, they damage a lot of stuff when they explode. Uh, so again, maintain the fluid, avoid this if you want to. Drain plugs in this region right here. Uh, otherwise, maintain your fluid. All right, that's all for now. These are going to the scrap pile. Hopefully your PTU lasts much longer than these ones did. And I'll see you guys next time.